my dear fellows and uh, my students um, welcome to hr pakistan official page i am mehta bukhari representing university of bradford in pakistan for your admission scholarships and uh, visa assistance with me uh, let me introduce uh, nasheen from bradford university we both are here today uh, to answer your questions and to take your applications for uh, september 2020 intake Right, Nasheen is the regional manager for Middle East at the University of Bradford. Um, she leads on student recruitment and partnership development activity. She was born and raised in Bradford. That's why she's extremely passionate about uh, uh, promoting the city and the university to students across the world. As part of her roles, uh, Nasheen travels extensively around Europe, Middle East, and Pakistan. Thank you, Nasheen, for joining us today. And I would now request you to share your experience at University of Bradford with our students. Over to you. Thank you, Sam, and everybody. Firstly, thank you, Medab, and thank you, HR Consultants, uh, for inviting me to this Facebook Live session. It's great during these times to be able to connect uh, through technology and to be able to sort of communicate uh, through your platform. So hopefully today, students will be able to get insight a little further and reassurance that set September 2020 intake is still available uh, to the students in Pakistan and they are able to study at the University of Bradford. So like Medab uh, mentioned, I was born um, and raised in Bradford and I've been working there for almost uh, five years now. I've sort of covered different yeah. markets across, um, Brad, um, across the world, but it's really nice to meet people uh, from all different um, countries and be able to bring them to uh, it's such a diverse city like Bradford. Now, my experience in Bradford, I really do believe that the university makes the city. The university it has over 13,000 students, and those students, I would say around 20% of those students are from across the world. So as you can imagine, studying from Pakistan and going to the UK, it's great that you're meeting students from from the UK, you're getting that experience of studying abroad, but also you're meeting people from the likes of um, Kuwait, Saudi, China, from all across the world, from Europe. So it's fantastic for students to build their um, skills and to be able to communicate and um, be in that sort of environment academically and also for their personal skills as well. So again, just sort of to highlight um, more about Bradford, we offer a wide range of courses. Um, we offer courses from um, business, science, engineering. We also offer health courses as well. But one thing I would say is, especially for our students from Pakistan, what I've seen is that students, you know, really do benefit from studying, studying courses like law. So our LLM course is, one of the top ranked courses in our business school. We also have supply, supply chain management, which again, this is something that connects to Pakistan because of CPEG and there's so many other ways in which um, these courses can benefit students. Uh, we do offer that opportunity. Um, and then we also offer engineering, a wide range, so civil and structural, me mechanical, chemical, and then we are also going to courses like uh, medical courses, like optometry, pharmacy, biomedical science as well. 
we do offer a wide range of courses and again if you do have if you are interested drop a comment below and uh, the team at HR consultants who are the official representative of University of Bradford will be able to guide you on how you can submit submit your application I also want to reassure students yeah I also want to reassure students that during this time where globally we're all working from home so it's not just the issue in Pakistan it's not an issue just in the UK and um, you know this whole situation is happening across the world so um, as Bradford we're trying to support our students as much as possible we are um, continuously being very active in responding to applications and we have a team a dedicated team that is looking after the um, international applications and they are they're sort of responding within um, within four day four to sort of five days but again please be patient with uh, your counselors from HR consultants and uh, sometimes things can take a little longer so what I would say is submit your application for September intake because it is still open and we do have a wide range of opportunities to support students during this difficult time. Yeah. Thank you so much Roshin. thanks for adding this because most of the students are worried nowadays that uh, what will happen for September 2020 admission session. So you have cleared that uh, University of Bradford is still considering taking new applications and new admissions for uh, upcoming September 2020 intake, right? Yeah, absolutely, yeah. Okay, so, and, um, yeah. yeah, please carry on. Yeah, and another thing, I know, I guess students probably sort of worried about certain elements such as how am I going to meet my IELTS requirements? How am I going yeah. to um, be able to sit an English test? Because during this time, uh, the British Council have obviously uh, stopped offering the IELTS um, but the University of Bradford work again very closely with um, all our stakeholders in Pakistan and the HR. So what we do is we offer our own English language test. And with this oh, English language sweet. test, yeah, yeah, it's fantastic because any students that you get made out that come through you, come through HR consultants, we can register them quickly onto our English language language test for our September 2020 intake. So in terms of how things work out and um, it just depends uh, on, a, on a global scale um, what will happen with travel but we are offering the English language test and the dates will be offered um, end of this month so we will submit those dates to HR consultants so just keep those in mind and be in touch with them and they'll let you know when we'll be available to offer the English language test but again I would say please be patient we don't know what, what's happening with travel uh, but we are still offering our September intake. Right. Uh, Noshin, can you highlight something about uh, the students who are appearing uh, for the Cambridge IGSCSE or Cambridge International A-Level examination? What is the plan, uh, what University of Bradford has planned for them? So those students will get an overall um, grade. So if they're happy with the grade um, uh, from what the, they've been predicted, then we would accept that. We also accept O-Level um, at a grade, uh, grade B. But I think obviously if there is a situation where we, we are not, you know, they're not able to get a hold of their grades, we are looking at it on an individual basis. So this is why students need to be connected um, with our official representatives so that they can uh, continuously find out what we're doing and what uh, we will accept or not. Because I think, Ameta, as you probably know, I was born, yeah. but things are also changing. Exactly, because the University of Cambridge has decided to issue a predicted grades letter on the prediction of their institutions, yeah. colleges here. So all the institution, I think, in UK will be accepting students with their predicted Absolutely. grades. Absolutely, yeah. Right. So I think and yeah, 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 get those qualifications um, and continue to sort of still do research on the course that they're interested in. I know people are not going to school and not going into university, but I think it's still very important to sort of maintain that um, connection to your education. And it's important to sort of do that prior research to the course that you're applying to, the course that you, the subjects that you would have been studying at the moment. So continuously, I would advise students to maintain that uh, connection to education. Right, right. Noshin, can you elaborate something about the placement options specifically for the postgraduate applicant? Yeah, 
So the University of Rafa offers a wide range of uh, postgraduate courses, which is really targeted to students in Pakistan because for them, you know, they're getting one year, um, one year degree that they can study in the UK, so the UK um, accredited official degree. And what they will gain from that is a two year post study work visa. So, um, once, so they're only paying fees for one year. So our fees vary from um, 15000 to 19000 and that's without the scholarship. So later on, we will go into details about the scholarship. Yeah. Um, so our fees vary, but we offer, the, uh, the UK government offers a two-year post-student work visa, which is a fantastic opportunity for students from all across the world to be able to capitalise on the opportunity of studying, but also getting that experience. Uh, experience of working um, after their degree and then going back to Pakistan to live to them through their career. But also I would like to add that students can also work part-time to 20 hours which is a, again a great opportunity for students office. because yeah they can work part-time during um, uh, during term time so what they can do is um, you know it save money um, for the living expenses and also it's experience those soft skills that you need you might not get that in a classroom, whereas working part-time, you will get that opportunity to uh, build your personable skills. And Bradford, it's not a big city like Manchester and London, but we're very close to Manchester, 40 minutes away. Um, and what I would say is, because it's such a happening city, we have a population of half a million living in Bradford, uh, in and around. There's so much opportunity for part-time job. You can go... Um, and work in the city centre in retail, you can work in a restaurant, you can also work in um, something to do with IT, and you can also work on campus as well. So I've had to, a lot of my students work as student ambassadors where they've had opportunities to represent uh, Bradford on different platforms across across the world and also um, in the UK as well. So I think, again, there's a lot of opportunities for part-time jobs um, and possibly work visa as well. Right, and I think university has uh, a lot of university accommodation for international students, and obviously the Manchester City, uh, Bradford City is also a very uh, reasonable cost um, offers you know student accommodations. Absolutely, yeah. So you hit the nail on the head there, Megab. Uh, Bradford uh, as a city, uh, it's very cost effective to live there. So. Um, obviously, I've been born and uh, raised there, so I sort of know the prices. And you know, now I'm currently living in Dubai, so my office is based out here. So when I'm living out here, compared to the prices in Bradford, I, I do really see the difference. Um, and also, uh, you know, in, in Bradford, uh, uh, we have, um, like I mentioned, you get the, those part-time jobs to help you support the living um, there. But it's very cheap; it's not expensive, so. Again, things like transport, the city centre is only a five minute walk from the university, so they're not going to pay for taxis, they're not going to pay for a bus, they don't need to get a car or get a train, mm. everything is in a walking distance, so they do not need to worry. Um, and I think in terms of how people adjust into the culture, so in Pakistan people might not walk a lot, whereas in the UK we do prefer to walk. So I think um, as students, international students that are moving to um, Bradford, that's something that they, they would automatically get used to and enjoy as well. So yeah, part, um, that's one part to highlight um, of Bradford and the accommodation, as you mentioned. So we've got a variety of different accommodation and the prices start from £60 a week, uh, which again, if you compare it to other institutions across the UK, it is very cost effective. So um, we have two different types of accommodation. So we have the university accommodation that is on campus. So it's literally a two-minute walk. You can wake up 10 minutes before your lecture, roll out of bed and go to your lecture. However, we also have yeah. um, a private accommodation, which is in and around the university. And it's not on campus, but don't worry when I say it's not on campus, it's not a long walk. So we have one literally right outside the campus. And again, it's very uh, cost effective as well. And again, you've got loads of different accommodation in and around the university. Um, if you're right. studying, if you're a postgraduate student, you know, you'll be there for that full term. But if you're an undergraduate student in the first year, right. you can stay on campus, make friends, and then go for a private accommodation in and around the university. Um, and one thing I would highlight is we have a dedicated team on campus. Um, who will 
a range and uh, sort of support. Well, they would liaise with the HR consultant to support and um, support you with your accommodation. So if you need any recommendation, if you have a certain budget, um, if you want female only, if you want male only, if you want mixed, you know, that's entirely up to you. you. If you have certain um, desires, if you want an en suite, you can go for that option as well. So, um, yeah, you don't fear that students cannot get the options um, within their budget. That's uh, available and easy accessible in Grant Space. Now, Sheen, I have one more question for you. Uh, like you have mentioned that the University of Bradford can take their own English language test uh, in comparison of high test. So, uh, what is the arrangement if students cannot achieve the required band in IELTS? Like if he's uh, short of 0.5 band in any module, is there any pre-sessional English classes available at University of Bradford for all uh, UG and PG students? Yeah. So, um, uh, like most universities, we do offer pre-sessional for our and um, students who do not meet the IELTS requirement. However, currently, um, all our IELTS pre-sessional, sorry, are closed. Um, we, we don't currently have a, no applications are, um, we're not taking any applications for pre-sessional. However, what I will say is Bradford understands the current situation with what's happening and we will base and look at um, individual cases and assess. So if it's maybe 0.5 lower, we may be able to accept that. Don't quote me on it. Um, but again, like I said, we can look at individual cases and hopefully be flexible because we understand what the current uh, situation is like. And to be honest, even without um, the whole COVID-19 situation, we have been very supportive towards our students in Pakistan. If they're very passionate and show a good academic background, we will be um, sort of flexible with, with that. But it's literally by 0.5 and that would be it. So I would really encourage students to, this is a chance for them to improve their English whilst they're sat at home, read more books, read articles, um, watch movies in English, and to sort of um, build and enhance their, their English language so that when it comes to doing their exams, they'll hopefully pass it. Well, that's great. We're really excited to know that University of Bradford is really accommodating all type of students according to this situation, because most of the students are unable to take IELTS uh, even classes or to attempt the test because of uh, closure of everything here. Yeah. Right. So students will be more than happy to listen that uh, university can yeah. accept them. Yeah, there yeah. is a special so, arrangement yeah, we, for. Yeah, yeah, no, we, we are, be, and we'll base everything sort of on an individual basis. I think what students need to be quite patient and understanding at this point that we all, um, anything, any worries that they have, they just need to get in touch uh, via HR and we can sort of then um, support the students because we totally understand the challenges um, during moving to the UK, uh, regardless of the current situation. Right. Um, Nosheen, um, one of my students has uh, sent me a question that what type of ELT will you conduct in this situation? Because before that uh, COVID-19 situation, University of Bradford used to conduct the English test here in Pakistan. But now what are the next arrangements? Absolutely. Um, that's a great, great question uh, to ask. So um, like I mentioned, we have our um, English language test. So it's a bath out test that we have been conducting out in Pakistan for the past sort of two years. And um, we are, our aim is to continue to conduct that test and we're hoping that the, um, the um, restrictions will be lifted and we will be able to travel out to Pakistan to conduct this test. So that is our current vision for September 2020 and for January 2021. We are, will be coming in country. So it will be myself administrating the exam in country. Right. So that is our current sort of level of how we're conducting the test. If for whatever reason the travel ban isn't lifted, mm -hmm. not to complicate things, but if the travel ban isn't lifted, then it might delay September in to October. So that would mean that we would have time in advance to then relook at coming to Pakistan and then um, conducting those tests. So I, I would say to students at the moment, business is as usual. We are hoping to take the, the previous test out in Pakistan. Um, and our senior management are also looking at other options. But at the moment, nothing is official, but we are also looking at other options. So I would say keep in touch and we will let you know of any changes. Right. 
Okay. Um, next question is about one of my most favorite department, that is School of Management. And I'm really impressed by the University of Bradford School of Management. Can you elaborate mm-hmm. some some like rankings or accreditation about School of Management to our business absolutely. graduates? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So um, again, for the University of Bradford, the School of Management is one of our highlights and one of our strengths that we do highlight. Um, we are triple crown accredited, so um, students that do study uh, within the, the management um, faculty, they are then offered, they are getting this triple crown accredited degree, which also means that it's such a, it, it's not sort of, um, it is, it's not an easy course to get into in terms of um, our uh, strengths that we look at and uh, we want good quality students, that's, but to be able to say you've studied in a triple crown accredited uh, business school yeah. is something that will, you can take with you once you've graduated and go into um, uh, any job that you want to, what you'll go and pursue into. Um, so again, the business school offers a wide range of courses, like I mentioned, um, LLM, supply chain, man- chain management, management in itself as well. So we have, um, I guess we have a lot of connections as well to the business industry um, in Bradford, so students can gain that gain that experience. So even if you're not studying business, we also like to incorporate those skills for students, um, to in, um, but even with the engineering and science as well. So um, yeah, it's a fantastic um, department that we have, and our MBA is top five in the whole UK as well. Right. Next question is about the law entry requirement. Uh, like you have mentioned earlier that your law program is a very prestigious one offered at University of Bradford. Mm-hmm. What exactly percentage is uh, required from the Pakistani law graduates, like uh, yes. from the Pakistani public sector universities, specifically like University yes. of Punjab, etc.? Yeah. So, so what percentage are you looking for? Yeah, so we've got a fantastic relationship with uh, the University of Punjab and we do get a lot of students who have graduated from there and are currently studying um, in Bradford. And our entry requirement is 45% for the University of Punjab, which is good for students in Pakistan who have studied law. Um, Generally across the board, if you have a 2.5 CGPA um, from other universities, again, we will um, accept that as well for anything sort of equivalent. And... Again, we can look to be a little bit flexible as long as you show strong academic skills and passion to study the course, we can be, we can look at your individual basis. But 45% for the University of Punjab, yeah. Right. Anything else would you like to add about this, the entry requirements of different departments, specifically from Pakistan? So, yeah, so I, what I would say is, um, in terms of our postgraduate courses, we would look at sort of a, a base of 2.5 CGPA to be able to enter any of our courses at the, uh, at the university. Obviously, for some of the science courses, like I mentioned, we, we might um, ask for a little bit of a higher entry requirement, or we might ask you to have some experience. For, for example, the MBA, uh, you may need to yeah. get experience to actually study, study that course. Um, and in terms of IELTS, we ask for a 6.0. So students yeah, and that is who, the most important question. Yeah. Absolutely. So for most of our courses, we are accepted 6.0 with no sub-tests less than 5.5. So that gives you a basis of what um, you actually need uh, in terms of your academic skills to be able to get into the university. But in addition to that, the students need to prepare their personal statement. So that's just one page long on uh, Microsoft Word, a document on why they want to study in the UK, why this particular course, and just a, a time for students to reflect on uh, what academic and personal personable skills they have that will that they can bring to the university. Yes, absolutely. The application should accompany all of these things when the application form, like CV is the most important thing, and the personal statement why someone wants to take admission into yeah. that course. Yeah. Right. Um, and, uh, the next. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. No, please, you carry on. Then I will uh, move on to the next question. Yeah. So and also what I would just say is for students just to ensure that they um, update their CV with all the relevant experience that they, they do have. Um, and that will be an opportunity for students to bring their CV to the UK. And our we have a dedicated um, careers department at the University of Bradford. 
And every week on a Tuesday, we advertise part-time jobs for students uh, to apply for. And our, our team on campus, once you've enrolled, they'll support you with your CV and help you. Um, they, they'll advise you on what jobs are available out there. And um, so you can go see them um, when you are on campus. Exactly. Now, Sheen, the next and uh, the most important question is, like every student asks about the scholarships. What do you want to add in? Yeah. So University of Bradford recently launched, uh, I say recently, about over a year ago, they, re uh, they launched a scholarship for our students in Pakistan because we have seen, uh, we have such a huge connection to, uh, to Pakistan uh, in Bradford. We wanted to offer something back uh, to the, to Pakistan and we are now currently offering scholarship up to uh, £4,000. So oh, what I would sweet. say is, yeah, it's fantastic because our fees, uh, it kind of brings fees down to around £11,000 for students um, and £4,000 scholarship are available for undergraduate and postgraduate students as well. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right, that's something extraordinary, like four thousand pounds is a good amount. Yeah. Yeah, and also I want to highlight, Mehzab, that we also, like I said, we like to give back to our community in Pakistan. Uh, we offer five fully funded scholarships as well. Now, this scholarship is mm -hmm. for it's called the Best Place Scholarship. So the Best Place Scholarship um, offers your living allowance and your tuition fees as well. This covers that for the full. Uh, postgraduate course that you do apply for, but it is only for engineering and science background students. So if you are considering applying for a science right. or engineering course, and you are from the north of Pakistan, um, we you can apply for the Best Way Scholarship, and this will allow you to then um, hopefully get in the run um, to be successful with that scholarship. And we have five per year, which is a good amount. Yes, perfectly. Now, she next question received from uh, Mr. Suleiman. Uh, he's asking that he has applied for uh, MSc Supply Chain and Logistics course, but it but his offer letter doesn't reflect the placement year option. Whether he needs to apply again or uh, this course offers the placement option or not. Uh, so we, there's no there's no placement option with, with that. If you just get the post to do work visa. So um, if he Again, if, if these apply to HR consultants, if you want to drop them a message and let me know, um, and I'll have a look at his um, offer letter. But um, yeah, there's, it's just a one year course, but he'll get a two year post study work visa. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, that makes sense. So, for all the questions related to the work placement, the best answer is that as per the government uh, introduction of post study work visa, you will be getting one year MSc program and then two years post study work visa. So, all together, you will be getting three years visa. Absolutely. Right. Yeah, exactly. Um, Noshin, there is one uh, scholarship mentioned on the webpage is a uh, Best Way Foundation Scholarship for Pakistan. Yeah. Can you elaborate its entry requirement because there is some specific deadline for this scholarship as well? So, what is uh, what are the requirements to apply for this scholarship? So, with this uh, with this scholarship, uh, as you, as I've just uh, mentioned, um, it's a bit, we have five of those scholarships available, and it's fully funded for tuition fees and also for the uh, living allowance as well, which is fantastic. It is only for postgraduate students, and um, so anyone um, applying um, the, the, it is just for postgraduate and for engineering and business. Uh, so, math engineering and science background. So the entry requirement for this is for anyone with a 2.5 CGPA or higher, they can submit the application um, for, for the scholarship. Right, and as per my understanding, student write, needs to write down a very good uh, like personal statement, uh, adding in uh, it that what uh, are the specific reasons why he wants to get that uh, fully funded scholarship offered yeah. by university. So with the, with the £4,000 scholarship, um, like I mentioned, if you apply to HR consultant on your offer letter, the £4,000 scholarship will be on, uh, available to you as long as you meet the academic requirements for us. However, for the Best Place uh, Scholarship, you will need to fill a separate mm -hmm. application form out. And again, uh, the team will support you or you can send me a message directly and I can support you with that. All right, so um, the deadline of scholarships uh, will be extended for this year because uh, on the webpage it is mentioned like May, end of May 2020. 
Um, currently, for the best way, um, scholarship, I would say that that is the deadline that we're sticking to uh, because students can still apply considering they're at home. Um, and obviously, I would say get the applications in by May, by the deadline, um, so that they can assess and allow you to enter in the September 2020 intake. Right. Um, you want to recommend something to international students uh, who are planning to take admissions for next intake? What are the next steps they, they need to follow? Absolutely, yes. Yeah. So again, what I would say to students is at this point, um, if you submit your current transcripts, if you don't have all your um, your documents and your, your uh, certificate, I would say submit all the documents that you currently have. Uh, via HR consultants, and you can send them to them on their WhatsApp. They've dropped their number uh, on, on here. And um, you need your passport, you need, need a copy of your CV as well, and any English uh, English test that you might have done, so IELTS or if you've uh, done all levels, so all that sort of academic evidence, we do need that. And then HR will submit your application. And if you wait sort of a week, they'll get a response. Um, and I think in terms of if you don't, if you can't take the English language test, just please be patient. Like I said, my plan is to come out to Pakistan and conduct this English language test. Um, we just need to sort of get heads up from uh, Pakistan, the UK, on what's going on in terms of the travel. So that is in the pipeline. However, please don't worry. Our senior management are also looking at um, other options for students who, who can't take the English language test. So. I would say students should apply as normal, submit their applications, and we can, if there's any issues, we can look at it on an individual basis. Right. There is one more last question received from okay. uh, Fahad Shokat. He's asking that uh, how much CGP is required for MS program? I think you have already answered it that minimum 2.5 CGP is required yes. Yes. for MS program. Yes. Yeah. Yes, is absolutely. there any um, like grading requirement as well? Like most of the Pakistani universities has a very different uh, CGP awarding uh, mm -hmm. system. So minimum percentage uh, requirement is like sixty percent or something like yeah, that. Yeah, sixty percent. Yeah. So absolutely uh, correct, Madhab. Um So sixty percent on average is what we ask for, and we also ask for either sixty percent or two point five CGP. Again, mm -hmm. um, if you're worried that you might not meet your grades by a few percentage or few marks. Don't be a submit your application, we can look into it and then we can base it around that. Right. One student is asking about the early bird scholarship. I think after the discount of £4,000, uh, uh, will you top up this uh, scholarship with some early bird discount or not? So if students submit, pay the, all their fees before they enroll, we will give them a discount of um, 3%. So students will get a 3% discount on all their fee if they do submit their tuition fees before September enrollment date. Right. Mm -hmm. That's great. Um, I think it was a very informative session and you have uh, you. So everything about the admission requirement and then the scholarship requirement. Um, yeah. Just for the information of students, we'll be having another session with Nasheen for University of Bradford tomorrow again at the same time at 8 to 8, 15 p.m. So get set ready with your questions, uh, more questions about uh, like visa requirements, visa checklist and the credibility interview requirements. So we'll be addressing these points later on tomorrow in our uh, uh, next session. Right. Uh, thank you, Nasheen, for joining us today. It was really thank great to time. have you on our board. And uh, um, uh, on the, on behalf of HR team, I would like to thank you and uh, the you. students who are joining us today. Please get set ready your questions for tomorrow again. Yeah. Would you like yeah, to add something, you. Nasheen, at the end? Yeah, yeah just, just like to mirror what you said. Thank you for inviting me. Thank you to HR consultants and students. Business is as usual, hopefully, fingers crossed, and we are still promoting our September intake. Get your documents, whatever you have at the moment, and start submitting your applications that we can support you. And um, hopefully you can get into the scholarships as well and have successful time after being at Bradford. Right. Uh, and the students who are really eager to join uh, for the September 2020 intake, please make your application and share with the HR team. We are uh, taking applications on uh, our email and on our web, web, uh, WhatsApp as well. 
please uh, join our HR Facebook page as well for the most recent updates. Um, you may send your inquiries at our official WhatsApp number. My official number is 0346-4747-023. So please join us for the next admission intake. Thank you so much. Thank you, Rasheen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.